Hi everyone and welcome back to Novel Nomad and welcome to day 8 of Vlogmas. So what I've decided to do today, because it's such a beautiful day, we're now officially into summer because it's warm, it's sunny, we've got blue skies and there's probably going to be a north wind that's going to give me hay fever, but that all aside, it's such a beautiful day. I just wanted to do a really relaxed video and go through all the books that I have read this week for Cloak and Dagger Christmas. I'm doing the readathon, or hosting the readathon, I should say, alongside Kate Howe, Mel, and Caroline. I'll link them all down below. I uploaded the challenges video, the announcement, and also my TBR, and I haven't really done too much else. So what I wanted to do is actually go through the books um, that I've read and if they can be recommendations for you going through the challenge at the moment or if you do want to participate, uh, I hope you can pick up any of these books for a potential uh, mystery read for the month of December. So starting off, we have The Unexpected Return of Josephine Fox by Claire Gradage. This was the first book I read. I wanted to pick it up straight away. It's set during World War II in England as a woman who is I think in her 40s now. Um, she decides to go back to her home village or the village of her youth um, where she was summarily dismissed by her family and sent off to live with her also dismissed mother or a strange mother I should say. The mother was never allowed to return to see her when she was younger. So she is uh, forced back to the community because she wants to find out who her father was. Her mother was dying of cancer during uh, the London Blitz and when she died, she was shocked by a, um, a name mentioned in a paper, a, ho a paper that was sent by um, her mother's or her uncle from home. And so she believes that it does indicate who her father was because the mother kept saying, it's him, it's him, and she's absolutely petrified of who he is. So it's very intriguing. Now, I read this for the Secrets Challenge, um, and it does have quite a lot of secrets and it does hold them quite well. I just, there was a bit of a disconnect for me with character development. I felt at the time it was very plot based. It didn't feel inherently like it was set during the war. Um, it felt almost too much like a post-war novel. Um, the murder mystery itself, which is at the heart of this, is the fact that a young woman body is found in a bomb, bomb crater. So all these other bodies were pulled out of where this pub was destroyed in this local village from a bomb. But then this other woman's body was also thrown in there and they weren't sure why. Um, so yeah, so she basically becomes coroner's assistant. Um, and there's a lot of background, emotional background to that relationship. Um, and it's really fascinating to see those characters. But I, I just wanted more. It just... I just felt like something was lacking in this book. There was that that kind of that emotional sense that just was lacking. So whilst it was a good read, it wasn't a brilliant read. It was a bit of a slow start for Cloak and Dagger for me. Next for Cloak and Dagger, I read uh, The Birds by Daphne du Maurier. I also read the other story, short stories in this collection. This is wonderfully spooky. Um, it kind of notched up that that horrific uh, tension in the book and she's just a master at doing that just these everyday things that just freak you out <laughs> she was able to capture that so well and this was written after the war and it's set after the war as well so it has the characters reliving many of those um warlike um survival modes and it was almost second nature for them but of course it was because the birds were attacking everyone and it was just the like the dystopian attitude that I had at the end of the story was fantastic it was just it's such a great short read I just loved it so much now I did pick up the unseen by Anna Mazzola because for the challenge of getting something off my t my shelf my TBR that's been there for a while but um this will work perfectly for the secrets challenge as well because there's so many secrets and okay so let me let me give you a premise it's about a woman who has been uh, implicated in the death of a her ex-lover's new partner um, whose body parts were found scattered all around London in 1837 and so she's been implicated in the murder and she's been um, condemned to death um, not that she's now tried for the king's mercy and so a coroner is now well 
more like an investigator for the coroner, is uh, forced to come in and review everything, review the evidence, see what actually happened, and give his findings. Because usually, by this time, they weren't hanging women that frequently, but they, they still did at certain points. So there was all this, like, uproar and media, and, and the guy, the, the um, investigator who's actually a lawyer, comes in, He's really fascinating. I really love his character. He's a very um, gentle person who wants justice. And the main character, Sarah, who is the one implicated in the murder, um, she seems to be one who's also had quite a soft nature and has been quite horrendously abused throughout her life. So she's been manipulated. So he's trying to um, pull the truth from her in any way he can. And she is giving versions of the truth and holding many things back and lots of things come to light later on that just throw so much shade <laughs> on what's happened and what statements that she's given. So it's really good. By the end of it, I was quite shocked by the ending. I think I wanted something a bit more like explosive, but after after a while, I think after a day of settling down into it, I actually really thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought it was a perfect ending for the book because it left so much unsaid. And that's the perfect thing about uh, like levels of justice. What is unsaid? What is being interpreted? Can the jury truly make a true judgment on someone from certain truths and certain lies? So it was just such an intense read. Um, but yeah, I, I really, really enjoyed this one. In reflection, um, I kind of was uh, talking to Kate Howe when I was reading this and I just said I felt like just wanting to shake all the damn secrets from this book and get the truth because I couldn't trust anything. Uh, the author had so perfectly manipulated my ability to trust what the characters were saying that I didn't believe them even when it was did turn out to be the truth. Um, but no, so this was really, really good and a great um, recommendation for if you want to do the secrets challenge. So what am I going to be reading next week for Cloak and Dagger? Uh, both of them, I'm going to be starting The Trembling Hills by Phyllis Whitney. This is our group read. If you want to join in, let me know. I will be posting, I'm not sure where, but maybe on my stories, I'll be posting some thoughts as I go through. I'm also going to be doing my buddy read of Reese Bow and Airs and Graces with Kate Howe. This is continuing on with the Georgie series. She's beautifully hilarious in this book, but also uh, the book before was absolutely one of my favourites. So I want to see where they go from there. And additionally, if I get to it, one of my satellite reads is uh, Suitors and Sabotage by Cindy Ansley. I think, I think this is set in like late Regency. Victorian era so we shall see um it sounds pretty cute I think it's a middle grade to teen book I'm not 100% sure but um otherwise it sounds like a very light fluffy read after having some very serious early on Cro Cloak and Dagger Christmas all right so tell me what you're reading for Cloak and Dagger Christmas and let me know down below what you've read or you're planning to read or if you'd like any more information on these books and I'll see you tomorrow bye